Thank you, Sissy. Thank you very much. And it's fantastic. How exciting to see this, to see the future of service design in the world's biggest and brightest country. Congratulations to everyone who's at this conference. My name is Adam, but before I start, I would like to ask you a question. I'd like you to imagine that you work for an airport. This is a true story from colleagues of mine in Germany. And at the airport, you know that older travelers use the bathroom at the airport three times more often than younger travelers. I'm a man around 50, I know the situation. So imagine you work for this airport and you want to improve the experience. How would you improve the experience of using the airport for older travelers based on this data? Please turn to your neighbor and have a short conversation about that. Please talk. Please talk to your neighbor about this. Adam 邀请大家这个两两之间可以有一个小小的对话讨论一下，就是我们怎么去改变，就是机场的厕所有这么多，每天有这么多人上厕所的这么一个难题，它的这个体验到底是怎么样的？ Thank you. That was a small invitation to co-create. And many of us preferred not to co-create, but to sit and think for ourselves. And this is one of the big challenges facing design and facing industry, believing that the answer is inside ourselves. But even if we do co-create, we face problems. I often ask this question in audiences and I hear ideas like, oh, we should have more bathrooms. Or we should make the bathrooms more comfortable, more accessible. Or we should put cool music in the bathroom that the old people like. But the problem is, we didn't ask the first right question. We didn't ask why. Do older people use the bathroom more often? And the people running this study, they did some research. They went to the bathrooms and they washed their hands for a very, very long time. And they saw what was happening when people came in to the bathroom and what they did there. And they found that old people do use the bathroom more often than younger people because in the bathroom you can hear the flight information better. So if our idea was to improve the bathroom, to make it more comfortable, to make it more enjoyable, we made the classic mistake of having great answers to the wrong problem. Please hold that thought. Hi, my name is Adam. Um, I've been introduced by Sissy, thank you. I'm the co-founder of Workplay Experience. I'm the co-initiator of the Global Service Jam. I'm a co-author of This Is Service Design Doing and an adjunct professor, which is not a real professor, at the IE Business School in Madrid. Um, very briefly, my company, we are involved in helping organizations change the way people work. Co-creation at scale. Some of our clients have tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of employees and they want to change the way they work. I work all over the world, 
Some of my clients are in the energy industry, in the chemistry industry, in fashion, in government. It's a really fun job. And here in Asia and Pacific, I'm very proud to partner with CBI Shanghai, just across the street here, and with my friends at Make Studios in Hong Kong. So it's always good to be here working with those people. This is the book I wrote by the book, Feed My Children. Yeah. I have no children, it's okay. But I wrote the book with these four gentlemen, and with one of them together, Marcus, I have a company. And our company started the Global Service Jam. This was just mentioned. This is an event which takes place all over the world once every year. And if you go along to that, you will meet strangers. You will spend time with them, and you will be given a common theme. Around 124 locations all around the world this year, one shared theme. Everybody works on the same theme, which is a surprise. You don't know it beforehand. And in 48 hours, you're invited to form teams, do research, ideate, develop, and test prototypes. And at the end of the weekend, we have around 600 new prototypes published for the world on our digital platform. And the motto of this event is doing, not talking. And that's what I want to talk about today. Co-creating impact. Co-creation. We know that, as Birgit said earlier, for organizations to be successful, as the McKinsey Report and other sources show, we need to work across silos. We need to produce better solutions to engage customers, employees, and other stakeholders more, and land cheaper, faster projects. And it has been shown that disciplines like service design, co-creative disciplines, can do this. So what I want to give to you guys in the next 10 minutes or so is a couple of my experience from working with large organizations and with the Global Service Jam and other events like that. I want to help you understand the process. I want to show you some key behaviors and suggest what you can do next after this conference. One, understanding the process. Now, when I go to people and I try to explain co-creation to them, it's usually because they want service design. We're in the great place now. People are asking us for this, so that's really nice. And I often explain to them the double diamond, this famous plot made by the design council in the UK where you diverge and you converge to make sure you solve the right problem before you diverge and converge to solve the problem right. It's a very famous visualization. Use this model, I say to these people. It will guide you, I say to these people. And then they look somewhere else and they hear, ah, it's simple. It's diverging and converging. Very easy. And there are four clear steps. Then they talk to another agency, and they hear there are seven definite stages. And someone else says there are five phases. And someone else says it's very easy. You just need to follow these circular sign circles. And somebody else says there are four main activities. Well, we say four. Actually, it's 160 main activities. And somebody else says your project will look like this. And people look at me, and they say... And it's different for every single one of these processes, for short forms, for long forms. And I kind of go, yeah, it's a bit different. And they say, what? I'm not sure if this is real advice or typical consulting bullshit. And I think the problem is the way that we are talking to people about this and the way we are talking to you about this. So instead of processes, instead of techniques, I want to talk to you about the behaviors of impactful co-creation. How do people need to be? Please stand up and find a partner. Now. You can be two people, you can be three people. And please stand in five, four, three, two, one. And together, in your pair or your group, I would like you to invent a story. 
a new story which never existed before. But you will do this story one word each. For example, you might start, once there was a girl who lived in the city and one day, whatever. It's your story, but it's always one word each. It doesn't really matter so much about the content of the story. I would like you to listen in your head for when does the story flow? When is this activity easy? Of course, you can do this in Chinese or English or any other language that you share. This is your task. The person who begins the story is the person with the most beautiful shoes. Ah, 在这个环节当中呢 ，Adam 邀请大家来一起啊，来玩一个共创的游戏，就是你们可以两个人或者是三个人、四个人都可以一组，然后每个人一次只能说一个词。不管你用中文还是英文，然后我们一起去会完成一个故事。然后开始的这个人比较有意思，就是穿着最漂亮的鞋，你们当中吹的最漂亮的鞋的人先开始这个故事。啊， uh, 我可以跟 c a s s i e 一起做个示范。Okay. Please tell a story. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. Okay. 今天我们去。辐射大会演讲十，好吗？摔了，<笑>好吧。但是我们外面有一个胖子。<笑><笑> Thank you. Thank you. 其实其实就是这样的一个共创的游戏，然后可以帮大家一起开开脑洞，来尝试一下这个共创的氛围到底是怎么样。其实刚刚 Adam 有说，这个重点不在于说我们的故事有多完美。其实我刚刚看跟 Cassie 的这个故事也不是很完美，当中我们需要去找寻这个创造故事的节奏。Just do the translation for you. Please try. Please try. 大家可以试一下啊。No, it's it's okay. And ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Thank you. Thank your partner. Thank you. Thank you. And please sit down. So that was a small. Exercise a small example of co-creation, and I would like you to think about how that felt for you, and what made it work, what made it flow, and what blocked it. When was it moving? When was it easy? And when was it difficult? Now I've done this exercise many times with different people, and these are the answers they normally give me. What blocks the flow? What makes it difficult? It's usually things like thinking too much, trying to be smart, 
trying to be clever, sticking to my own idea. Don't change my idea. Yeah? Trying to predict the future, to know what will come next, and wanting to be perfect. Wanting to be perfect, especially in China. Wanting to be perfect. This is your strength, but it can be a problem. What makes it easy is when we really listen. When we just begin, we just try it. And if something happens which is unexpected, we adapt. Now, these are very strong and good behaviors. These are also very strong and good behaviors. But in today's fast-moving world, we need to balance this better. We need to move organizations from here to a balance between these two things. And that is the challenge of co-creation. So I present to you, for the last couple of minutes of my talk, what I call the five key behaviors of impactful co-creation. Things that you can do, things that your organization can do. Remember this one? Remember the toilet example? The bathroom example? The first rule is get out of your seat. Get out on the street. You cannot change reality from your desk. Stop trying to do that. You need to spend time with users and spend time with stakeholders. Here's a great example. This was a service design project for the employee experience of working on an oil rig. You can't just visit an oil rig as a researcher. You need to do months of safety training. But this agency did that. They put their staff through months of safety training with the oil rig workers. And can you imagine the difference between the quality of knowledge you get when you train for months with people and then live on the oil rig with them compared to what you can learn from your desk? It's a totally different proposition and it changed the quality of the project. The second one, this will surprise you, ideas are not the important part. The trouble is, if an idea is genuinely new, we cannot know if it will work or not. You can read Kahneman on this if you want to. His work has been criticized, but the basic foundation is true. If an idea is genuinely new, no boss can tell you this will work or not. No frontline staff can tell you this will work or not. For example, Tony Shea, when he wanted to start selling shoes online for the first time in America, he didn't know if it would work or not. Nobody can tell him if it will work or not. So he put up a web shop and he offered shoes online. He had no logistics, no stock. No back end. When people bought shoes, he went across the street to the shoe shop and he bought the shoes in the shoe store and he brought them back and he sent them out to customers. And he co-created with his customers to discover how this might work. Seven years later, he sold his company for $1.6 billion to Amazon. We need to stop being perfect at the beginning. I know shitty is a bad word, but it's the best word to describe this. Your first attempts need to be rubbish. They need to be awful. They need to be a little bit embarrassing. We don't know which ideas will work, so we have to try things. Here's a great example from a government service. This is Los Angeles at the Global GovJam. And these guys had the idea for a citizen service and one hour after having the idea, they are testing it in the street with real citizens. They learn so much more in half a day of doing this than they would from three weeks of sitting in the office and making PowerPoint presentations. It's brave, it's courageous, and you know what? The citizens love it. Or, the thing here is to ask yourself, 
we're not good enough to, start, to finish this, but we are good enough to start. You don't need to be very good to be good enough to start. Do we need experts? Yes, sometimes we do, because experts know where the problems are. But experts are often blind. We know from psychology that it's hard to see the next step if you're an expert. This is why people like NASA use crowd ideation and open ideation to find the ideas that their own experts cannot see. And the last one is the most important one. It's about building things together. This is an example from 31 Volts in the Netherlands where they worked together with KLM, the airline, and made a prototyping laboratory in the airport at Schiphol. And they worked with their customers to prototype the service. They didn't ask them questions. They didn't use them to test things. They didn't ask them for ideas. They asked them to work with us to prototype the service. We need a new flight announcement. Here is a microphone. What would you do? And you know what? They expected great ideas, and they got great ideas. What they got, which was unexpected, is they got amazing feedback from the customers. People love to be involved this way. People love to be part of co-creation. So to finish, what can you do next? These were my five principles. There's the summary. Take a picture of that one if you like. We'll put this online later. Get out of your seat. Get out on the street. Ideas are not so important. Start shitty, then iterate. Experts, sometimes. And build things together. So if you're a leader, if you're a startup, if you're a one-person organization, what does this mean for you? It means... You need to make it easy for you and your people to get out and meet people. You need to focus on insights from research and focus on prototypes that are in testing and less on idea management. You need to embrace shitty first drafts and iteration. Give, expert, give access to experts, but also to peer feedback, feedback from people like your people and make time and space to build an experiment. And I look out and I see, what? Is this service design or is this total culture change? People think service design is a workshop. Then they think it's a project management method. But soon they find it's a new way of working. And so we have... the sixth key behavior of impactful co-creation. You need to give people a safe space to try this. You can't ask people to shift from that side to that side overnight. They need a chance to see if they like it, to see if it's useful for them. How can you do that? In the words of Michael Schrag, MIT fellow for research and the former National Security and Advisor, Innovation advised to the U.S. government, you don't need good ideas, you need cheap experiments. So my request to you is, after this conference, ask yourself one question. When and where can you give your teams, your people, yourself, a safe space to co-create? A physical space, maybe? A time slot, a hackathon, a jam, mental space, and organizational freedom to try co-creation. Because if your organization is over here, you need to try what it feels to be over here. Let's call this good enough to get you started. Thank you very much. My name is Adam. Thank you.